In example five, we're looking at housing prices in a small town USA. And apparently they are symmetrically distributed with a mean of $50,000 and a standard deviation of $20,000. And we're going to use Chebyshev's inequality to estimate what proportion of the houses cost less than $90,000. So let me do a little graph here because again we're dealing with a symmetric distribution. You'll actually find out that this problem is quite similar to uh, an earlier one we did. I think it was example three in, uh, in this lecture. So if you remember how to do that one, you might want to try doing this one yourself before you watch me give the answers here because it works out pretty similarly. So let me make a little graph of the housing prices in small town. And again, they're symmetrically distributed, so I'm going to draw something nice and symmetric here. Something uh, looks like a bell curve. We'll learn later that this is actually the normal distribution, but uh, we haven't gotten to that point in the videos yet. And they're distributed around a mean of $50,000. So mu here is, is, I'll just say 50, I won't bother with the thousands. Um, now we want to estimate the proportion of houses that cost less than $90,000. So let me put in a 90,000 here. That's somewhere up beyond 50, that's 90. And we're told that we have a standard deviation of 20,000. Um, so I guess that means the uh, distance from the mean to the cutoff we're interested in is 40, so that's uh, two sigmas, two standard deviations, because that's 2 times 20. And because we're going to be using it, let me go ahead and put in two sigmas in the other direction, two sigmas in the other direction, which I guess would get you down to 50 minus 40 is 10 on the low side there. So that's just setting up the picture. We still need to bring in uh, Chebyshev's inequality. So um, Chebyshev says the probability that y will be um, more than k standard deviations away from its mean is less than or equal to 1 over k squared. So in this case, we're interested in being two standard deviations away from the mean. The way I got that was uh, 90 minus 50 is 40, which is 2 times 20. So that's two standard deviations there. Um, so the probability that uh, y minus 50 is the mean here is greater than or equal to, we already said k was 2, sigma is the standard deviation, 2 times 20, so that will be 40. According to Chebyshev's inequality, that's less than 1 over k squared, 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 fourth. So the probability of being that far away from the mean is less than one-fourth. So let me go ahead and fill that in here. That's uh, this probability. But it's also, it's also the probability on the low end because we're told that we have a symmetric distribution here. So what we know is that all that shaded region there has combined probability the probability of the shaded region is less than or equal to one-fourth. And since we know it's symmetric, we know that each one of those tails must be less than one-eighth. And one-eighth being one-half of one-fourth there. So probability is less than or equal to one-eighth. So let me go ahead and fill that in. The probability, uh, in particular, that y is bigger than 90 probability that y is bigger than 90. According to Chebyshev's inequality, since we are allowed to split it up between the top end and the low end, we said the distribution was symmetrical, um, is less than or equal to 1 half times 1 fourth, which is 1 eighth. And that, well, that was the probability that, was, that a house was greater than 90. We want to estimate the proportions of houses that cost less than 90,000. So the probability that y is less than 90, well, we turn that around. And so it's, it's greater than or equal to 1 minus 1 eighth. But of course, that's 7 eighths. And if we convert that into a percentage, that's uh, halfway between 3 fourths and 1. So that's halfway between 75 and 100. So that's 87. 0.5%. So 
the proportion or the probability, the proportion of houses that cost less than $90,000 in this town is, well, I can't say it's equal to 87%, but it's at least 87%. 87.5%. So I could say that at least 87% of the houses in this town must cost less than $90,000. That's the interpretation that I could put on that. At least 87% of these houses cost less than $90,000. So let me uh, recap where that's coming from. The probability that y minus mu is greater than k sigma is less than 1 over k squared. That's just the original version of Chebyshev's inequality. And so in this case, my mu was 50. That came from the mean housing price there. Standard deviation, the sigma is 20. That was also given to us in the problem. Now, I had to figure out what k would be. And in order to figure out what k would be, I wanted to know what I was being asked about. I was being asked about houses costing less than $90,000. So we're going to use 90 as our cutoff. And so 90 minus 50, that's uh, 50 is the mean, 90 is what we're interested in. The difference there is 40, which is two standard deviations, 2 times 20. So that's where I get my uh, k is equal to 2 there. k is equal to 2. So I plug that in to Chebyshev's inequality, and I get that the probability is less than 1 fourth. Um, that's the probability of being two standard deviations away from the mean in either direction. So that includes both of these regions here, both the high region and the low region. But I'm really only interested in how many of the houses are uh, costing too much on the high side. So I'm going to cut that region in half and get a probability of less than 1 8. So that's why that is less than 1 8, less than 1 8. And that was uh, describing the number of houses or the proportion of houses that cost more than $90,000. I want to find the proportion of houses that cost less than $90,000. So I switch that around. Instead of talking about 1 8, I talk about 1 minus 1 8. And instead of talking about less than or equal to, I have a greater than or equal to. And of course, 1 minus 1 8 simplifies down to 87.5%. So my answer here is, I don't just say 87.5% is my answer. My answer is that at least 87.5% of the houses in this town cost more than $90,000. And the at least part is very important part of the answer there. So that wraps up our uh, lecture on uh, Chebyshev's inequality. Kind of think of this as a companion to the lecture on Markov's inequality, which we have um, one of the previous videos is on Markov's inequality. They sort of go hand in hand. Markov's inequality, you just need to know the mean. Chebyshev's inequality, you need to know the mean and the standard deviation because of that sigma there. Um, so you need to know both for Chebyshev's inequality. And you do a little more cal computation for Chebyshev's inequality. But the uh, trade-off for that is that you usually get m stronger results. You usually get uh, more information about the probabilities for Chebyshev than you do for Markov. Uh, but remember, for either one of these inequalities, you always have to give your answer as an inequality. You'll never give a numerical value because those numerical values are just lower or upper bounds. So your answer will always be that the probability is less than this or greater than that. So that does it for Chebyshev's inequality, uh, kind of wrapping up a uh, chapter here. We'll jump in later on with the binomial distribution, so I hope you'll stick around for that. You are uh, enjoying the probability lecture series here on educator.com, and my name is Will Murray. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.